Hello and welcome. In late 2022, our team started an environmental study to evaluate potential improvements to the I-84 US-89 interchange in Weber County. UDOT has recently published a draft of a document called an Environmental Assessment, also known as an EA, as part of a process guided by the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. This document covers the information gathered to inform UDOT's decision on which improvements best meet the needs of this study. In this video, we're going to walk through some of the key information covered in the EA, including a description of the preferred alternative and an overview of the impacts. This video will provide a high-level overview of the topics covered in the environmental document. For more information on these topics and others, we encourage you to read the environmental assessment. The EA is available digitally on the website, and a physical copy is available for review at the locations listed here. The UDOT Central Office, the UDOT Region 1 Office, and at the public hearing on December 6th at South Weber Elementary. Let's get started by going over the purpose and need of this study. In the environmental process, any potential concepts that are developed are then evaluated upon how well they meet the purpose and need. The purpose boils down to the goals that should be accomplished by the preferred alternative or proposed improvements. The goals for this EA are to improve mobility, improve connectivity for all users and modes, support the local economy, improve safety and operations on US-89 and I-84, and replace aging infrastructure on I-84. The need represents the why, the reasons that this area needs improvement in the first place. The needs that UDOT identified here are existing and future traffic congestion, lack of multimodal routes, US-89 creates a barrier between residents and the business community, unsafe conditions from traffic queues on US-89, and poor and aging condition of the I-84 bridges. The study team developed this purpose and need based on the information gathered during the scoping phase, which happened in late 2022, early 2023. The scoping phase allows the team to have the information they need to clearly define the goals of the study, supported by data. This slide outlines the process for this environmental assessment and shows where we are in the process. As I mentioned, we started with the scoping phase at the beginning of this year, which is when we had our last public meeting. Now that we're at the end of 2023, we're at the tail end of the develop and publish EA phase. Now that the draft document has been published for review, there's a formal comment period open from November 22nd, 2023 to January 4th, 2024. The team will review and respond to all formal comments received in the final decision document. We expect to complete the document and process before spring 2024. As you may remember from our scoping meeting, we started this process by building off the work done in the previous concept study in which a bypass route was suggested. This means that we had an idea of the type of improvements that could best meet the purpose and need and minimize the impacts on the built and natural environments. The three bypasses considered were a west bypass, a center bypass, and an elevated bypass. The study team put together initial high-level designs for each of these three options and then evaluated them to determine the best solution based on the screening criteria, including their ability to meet the project's purpose and need and their potential to impact environmental resources. The option that is identified as the best fit in an environmental process is known as the preferred alternative. After the evaluation, the West Bypass concept best addressed the purpose and need of the project and was identified as the preferred alternative. This option would add a bypass parallel to US-89, beginning just north of South Weber Drive and tying back into mainline US-89 further up the hill south of Skyline Drive. In this scenario, commuters traveling on US-89 would have the option to take the bypass to avoid the I-84 interchange and the 6600 South area, allowing local traffic looking to use the I-84 interchange or access local roads in the area more freedom to do so by eliminating those drivers currently commuting via US-89. Let's look at some of the key features of this preferred alternative. Okay, let's start at the bottom of the map shown here on the screen. If this is showing up too small and you'd like to zoom in, these slides are available to download on the study website. The first key feature is a reconfiguration of the South Weber Drive interchange ramps to accommodate the changes on US-89. This South Weber interchange would be converted to a conventional interchange, eliminating the northbound US-89 loop ramp that is there currently. Next up, key features 2, 3, and 4 focus on the I-84 US-89 interchange itself. The preferred alternative would upgrade the interchange to a single-point urban interchange, also known as a SPUI. With this interchange type, all left turns come to a single point in the center of this interchange, hence the name. 
The SPUI option would improve the entrance and exit ramps to I-84, making it easier for drivers to move between I-84 and US-89, and would also replace the existing bridges of I-84. This type of interchange is typical in areas with higher traffic volumes and will help traffic flow more efficiently and more safely than the current cloverleaf configuration. Key feature 5 is the commuter bypass from South Weber to South Ogden. This bypass would allow commuter traffic to bypass the I-84 interchange and would carry drivers up the hill towards Skyline Drive. This will reduce traffic volumes on existing US-89, allowing drivers better access to I-84 or local roads in the area like 6600 South or Combe Road. Commuter traffic can continue through the area without having to stop, while local traffic can get where they need to go with far less congestion to deal with. Key feature 6 is the replacement of the railroad bridges to accommodate the widening on US-89. We'll go into more detail about this a little bit later in the video. Key feature 7 is additional north-south capacity on US-89 up towards Skyline Drive. US-89 will be four lanes in each direction in this area, adding additional lanes to accommodate traffic. Key feature 8 is at Harrison Boulevard. The preferred alternative recommends a two-lane flyover at Harrison Boulevard, allowing cars turning left from Harrison heading south on US-89 to use a flyover ramp instead of requiring them to stop at the light. We will also take a close look at what this would look like and why it makes sense for reducing traffic congestion later in the video. Key feature 9 deals with the active transportation improvements, or more commonly known as walking and biking improvements, for pedestrians and cyclists. There are additional trail connections recommended in the preferred alternative, which we will cover later in the video. Overall, the preferred alternative is projected to reduce the amount of traffic congestion in the area. As you can see here, there is a big difference in traffic backup between the no build on the left, showing what traffic would look like in 2050 if no improvements were made, and the build, showing what traffic would look like in 2050 with the preferred alternative constructed. With the no build, traffic heading north and traffic heading south on US-89 would be backed up for over a mile at the I-84-US-89 interchange during peak travel times. That number drops down to 300 feet or less of backup with the preferred alternative. Once the traffic backup issue is resolved at the I-84 US-89 interchange, the congestion moves further north to the Skyline and Harrison Boulevard intersections. In order to solve the issues at those intersections, the preferred alternative will be adding additional lanes to US-89 at Skyline Drive, allowing for four lanes in each direction, and a flyover ramp at Harrison Boulevard. The graphics shown here compare the traffic congestion in the area. The left assumes only three lanes on US-89 at Skyline, with no flyover. The right assumes four lanes on US-89 at Skyline and with the Harrison flyover, which is the preferred alternative. As you can see, the delays are greatly reduced when the preferred alternative is implemented. Here you can see a mock-up of what that flyover at Harrison Boulevard would look like. As mentioned, the preferred alternative recommends a two-lane flyover at Harrison Boulevard, allowing cars turning left from Harrison heading south on US-89 to use a flyover ramp instead of requiring them to stop at the light. Those southbound lefts account for over half of the turn movements at the intersection, and removing them from the cycle by allowing them to use a flyover instead will allow for traffic heading in other directions at this intersection more time to do so. The flyover ramp would have two lanes taking drivers up and over the intersection and connecting into mainline US-89 before the Skyline Drive intersection. This slide shows the comparison of traffic delays at Harrison Boulevard. The left showing what it would look like in 2050 if no flyover was added, and the right showing what it would look like in 2050 with the flyover. The flyover at Harrison helps keep traffic moving, reducing delays. We know that the intersection of Combe Road and US-89 is an important issue for the community, so we wanted to make sure we look at what this intersection would look like with the preferred alternative. The intersection function will stay the same as it is currently, allowing for both left and right turns in and out of Combe Road. This slide is looking at the traffic data on US-89 compared to what it is today. Currently on US-89, the average daily traffic is 47,000 drivers. If nothing is done, no action is taken, that number would jump up to 63,000. If we look at traffic numbers for the preferred alternative, the bypass itself would accommodate 55,000 drivers a day, meaning only 24,000 drivers would be using existing US-89 to access either I-84 or the local roads. Bringing it back to Combe Road, drivers trying to turn onto US-89 from Combe would only be dealing with half of the drivers on US-89 than are there today. In addition to the roadway improvements, the preferred alternative also includes a number of active transportation improvements with additional pedestrian and cyclist connections. 
On this map, you can see the existing trails in the area, shown in orange, and you can see the trails that are currently included on other regional transportation plans in green. The dark blue lines show the trail connections recommended by this project. With this plan, pedestrians and cyclists will have connections from South Weber Drive across the Weber River all the way up to Skyline Drive area. Again, please note that these plans are preliminary and these pedestrian and cyclist connections will require continued coordination with cities and the county. When we use the term right-of-way, we're referring to property impacts, essentially property that UDOT needs to purchase in order to accommodate the space needed for a project. The preferred alternative would require the purchase and relocation of two businesses and three houses. In addition to those impacts, there will be a handful of properties that UDOT will need to purchase a portion of, but that won't require relocation. Our team has been meeting with the impacted property owners over the past few weeks to discuss impacts and next steps. If you have any questions for our team about impacts to your property, please give us a call on our hotline. UDOT has been in close coordination with Union Pacific Railroad throughout this process to determine the appropriate changes to their existing rail lines in the area. The preferred alternative would require a realignment of these tracks and replacement of the railroad bridges over US 89. The north tracks and bridges would be realigned slightly to the south, while the southern tracks and bridges would be realigned slightly to the north. With any major transportation project, increased traffic noise is always a consideration that needs to be studied. Typically, noise walls are the most common form of noise reduction considered. In order for UDOT to construct a noise wall in an area, that wall must meet criteria to be deemed both feasible and reasonable by the current UDOT noise policy. To be considered feasible, the team looks at engineering considerations like topography, sight distance, access, etc., roadway safety considerations like the height of the wall compared to the location of nearby roads, and acoustic feasibility, meaning its ability to actually reduce noise for people impacted. To be considered reasonable, it must meet the noise abatement goal, or noise reduction goal, and be able to be constructed for a reasonable cost. The noise study for this project evaluated noise walls at three different locations. Location 1, along the northeast corner of the intersection of US 89 and Harrison Boulevard. Location 2, along the south side of I-84, west of the Weber River. And location 3, along the US 89 South Weber Drive northbound off-ramp. Of the three walls considered, none of them were deemed both feasible and reasonable. Locations 1 and 3 weren't feasible or reasonable, while location 2 was feasible but not reasonable due to the cost effectiveness. Questions we regularly get are, when is this going to happen, or when is construction going to start? The final environmental assessment is scheduled for completion in early 2024. If UDOT decides to move forward with the preferred alternative, the project would move into final design to fully lay out the details of how this could be constructed, and then would move to construction after that. Please note, future phases of this project have not been fully funded at this time. Although completing the EA is an important step in securing funding, we do not have any information on when funding will become available or when future construction would start. We have a variety of outreach channels set up for you to provide feedback during this comment period that's open now through January 4th. Send us your comments through email, using the comment form on our website, or mail in a comment to the address shown on the screen. We will also have comment forms and a court reporter accepting verbal comments available at our in-person public hearing on December 6th from 5 to 7 p.m. at South Weber Elementary School. More information on the impacts associated with the preferred alternative is available in the EA document. As mentioned, you can find a digital copy on our study website and a hard copy is available for review at these locations. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this project. If you have any questions or comments that come to mind after watching this video, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team via the channels shown here. We're available to answer any questions that you have and welcome any feedback.